Welcome back, Giants fans. We're going to do a little uh, news update of the past week or so since the last time I talked about the Giants. I forget the last time I did, but probably five, six, seven days ago. And some stuff has happened. You know, there was a joint practice with the Patriots. There were some injury scares going on. A trade happened. Another trade. The Giants have been very active with trades so far in the preseason. But anyway, we'll touch on some things, talk about some future videos I have coming out uh, pertaining to the Giants. But hopefully you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. So the first bit of news, Adoree Jackson went down with an ankle injury on a deep ball in the, I think it was in the joint practice against the Patriots, and it did not sound good at first. I think he was carted off, and there were definitely some concerns about his ankle because he's had injuries um, you know, with his ankle in the past, and it's not what you want to see for a guy who barely played last year, just signed a three-year, near $40 million deal with the team, but Based on reports, it seems like the Giants really dodged a bullet here, and it's only like a low ankle sprain. He might be out for a week or two, maybe three, but it's looking like he should be back for week one. If he has to miss one game, okay, so be it, but it's not really a long-term thing. At least they don't think so. The Giants definitely made out okay, and this is definitely the best-case scenario for what it could have been for the Giants' cornerback, too. And, you know, people had some, I guess people questioned the Adoree Jackson signing mainly due to injury, but there were some people out there that are like, do we really need a cornerback? And like, this is why if Adoree Jackson went down, it's like your depth at corner is all of a sudden kind of back to what it was last year. You have James Bradbury. And then on the other side, it's like, who are you going to put? Like, do you trust Josh Jackson right away? I do like him as a prospect, but can you trust him right away? Can you put Julian Love there? Um, Aaron Robinson's out, of course, you know, the third round pick this year. So there's not many, you know, can you put Rodarius Williams there week one? So that's why you go out there and sign two good corners like that's that's why you do it so Dory Jackson not being injured long term is definitely key was very happy to hear that um Kyle Rudolph is back at practice and coming off the foot surgery of course there was that whole controversy about should the Giants sign him knowing he was injured and whatnot they went through with it classy move by the Giants I will say but they bring Kyle Rudolph in he has not practiced yet he came back a couple days ago they're still not sure if he's going to be ready for week one, but it's a step in the right direction to get him back. I think it was August 25th or 24th he came back. So that was definitely good news, and hopefully we get Kyle Rudolph in week one. But once again, don't rush it. If he has to miss a game, okay, that's fine. And the Giants have a quick turnaround in week two, actually. So they play the um, they play the Broncos, of course, week one. And I think they play Washington on Thursday, week two. So it's a very quick turnaround. If you want to save these guys for week two, a more important divisional game, I get that part of it. But of course, as a fan, I want to see Kyle Rudolph out there. And Saquon Barkley as well ruled out for Sunday. There was a, uh, you know, a slight, slight chance Saquon could have went in there for one series and just, you know, I think Joe Judge, like, wants to get him in game action. He says he wants, he wants Saquon to get hit or tackled. I forget the quote he had. But, you know, Joe Judge wants him in there at some point. You thought maybe there was a chance Saquon was going to play, but it makes sense not to play him. I'd rather not. So Saquon will not play in the preseason here in 2021. Fine with me. And... If I had to guess, I still think he's out there week one. Kyle Rudolph, I'm still 50-50 on. I have no idea. But at least with Saquon, they're keeping him safe. So far, he's looked good in practice based on reports. And he should be out there week one, hopefully. So we'll find out. Um, it definitely helps, though, that Devontae Booker looked a lot better against the Browns uh, last Sunday. Ryan Santoso, the kicker, was traded to Carolina for a conditional seventh round pick. Um, you know, I gave my kudos to the Giants and Dave Gettleman for at least getting anything for a backup kicker. I love seeing that. Now, it is a conditional seventh round pick, and I, I believe conditional means he has to live up to some type of uh, standard and put up a certain amount of stats or something. Like, he has to at least have a decent season for the Carolina Panthers. Like, if Santoso, like, either gets injured, injured or doesn't play, he, you know, the Giants may not get that pick. So it all depends on how he plays. So as Giant fans, we should probably low-key root for Santoso unless, besides the game, we play him, of course. But, um, yeah, it's only a seventh-round pick. I get it. But so it's for a backup kicker. So anytime you can get an asset for a kicker, a backup kicker, I will take that. And the Giants once found uh, Carter Coughlin, Tay Crowder. They were seventh-round picks. You can get pretty useful players in the seventh round sometimes if you find a diamond in the rough. So definitely love that move by the Giants, although it's a small move move but I'll take it um there's been a lot of reports about 
the Giants' offensive inconsistencies at practice. Now, I have a couple friends that went up to Foxborough. I'm sure some of you guys know who I'm talking about from Twitter. Um, But yeah, I mean, they basically said they were not too thrilled with what they saw at the practice in Foxborough. And if I like, if I had high expectations for the Giants' offense coming into this year, I, w- I wouldn't really care about the practice reports. But the fact that most Giant fans are already concerned about the offense, plus we have to hear about, you know, the offense is so up and down in the preseason, and it's been very down in the preseason, I, I should say. But in practice and joint practices, they've had days where they looked really bad. Some they looked okay. But I'd rather hear that the offense is doing well. Like, I'm a little concerned hearing about the offensive inconsistencies. Is this the end of the world? No, because Galladay's not there. Um, of course, Rudolph's not there. Who's someone else? I forget his name now. Someone else is out. Too. Oh, Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony's probably not there as well. So, um, yeah, it's not like they're at full strength, but I'd rather hear that the offense was clicking and looking a lot better in year two of Jason Garrett. But so far, based on the reports, I have not seen this with my own eyes, but I, you know, it's a lot of people saying it that are in the uh, media. Uh, things have not looked great uh, nor consistent with the Giants offense so far, but hopefully in week one, there's some type of magical turnaround, but you have to have somewhat tempered expectations because this offense was bad last year. I know they added a lot of people, spent a lot of money, but sometimes, you know, it takes a little while to get going. So hopefully in week one, they can find the way, but um, I'm definitely not, you know, expecting to put up 35 points on the Broncos week one. I'll put it that way. So the final roster cuts are supposed to be on the 31st of August. I have no idea what day it is. It's coming up soon. Let me pull up the uh, the calendar. That would be on Tuesday. So Tuesday, 4 p.m. is when the final cuts are going to be made. I actually want to make a video about final 53 predictions. I'll probably release it on like Sunday, maybe. I'll try. I'll try for Sunday. We'll see. But um, I've so far made like a list of who I think is going to make it. I have 51 guys I think written down here. So I have 51 of the 53. Got to add a couple more. But yeah, that'll be a fun video to do. I try to do that one every year. I think most content creators do it. But um, so I'll do that video. I have a couple other videos I wanted to come out here with the Giants. So the final 53 video, of course, the record prediction video, which I'm telling you guys right now. I went in with this mindset last year. I'm not going to be a homer when doing the schedule prediction. If I had the Giants at 7 and 11, then, you know, sue me. It is what it is. No, 7 and 10. Why am I saying 7 and 11? 7 and 10. Not 7 and 11. So <laughs> can't do math sometimes. But 7 and 10, then sue me. Sorry. You know, but last year I had them at 6 and 10, and I got 14 out of 16 games right. And I felt dirty at the time doing it, but it ended up being a very – accurate predictions so like you know i don't want to be right of course if i have them going bad but like i'm betting these games with a gun to my head that's kind of how i'm doing it so um not betting not literally betting but you know what i mean so anyway um i wanted to make another video for players i think exceed their expectations i have you know at least a handful of guys on this team that i think can actually have better years than most people expect so i want to kind of shine some light on those guys before the year starts and then the community page questions i want to you know answer some questions from you guys uh before the season starts now i might do another video with another content creator i'm sure you guys know who i'm talking about i talk to the same two guys every time but um i might do a video with one of those guys we talked about it in the past he said he was up for it so i might do a video like that not sure if it'll be live or pre-recorded i'll you know keep you guys updated with that of course but that should be it i might do some other giant stuff if i think about it but those are like the four main videos i'm trying to do before the season starts up here so uh, we're getting there sunday is the final preseason game then they get like a week off basically which is good you know no fourth preseason game just keep the guys healthy put them in bubble wrap get them there for week one hopefully the guys that are already injured are there you know john ross i believe has a hamstring as well there's a lot of guys that you know right now have minor injuries we gotta get them out there so hopefully they rest up and heal up nicely so Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, next video is probably going to be the 53-man roster prediction. Stick around for that one, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time.